up everybody, it's Colby Cheese. I've been playing some Path of Exile and I thought I'd bring you guys a guide on uh, Act 1. This is my YOLO guide, in other words, how to get through hardcore without dying. And so I'm going to be running through with a dagger shadow. Now whenever you start the game, you don't really need to do any of the mobs on the beach. Just run straight to the very end until you find the giant zombie named Hillock. And he's actually very simple with every single class. Just spam the ability that you were given with the skill gem that dropped and use your potions as soon as your mana or health start to drop. He's gonna die, pick up all of the items and just use whatever it is that you can pick up. Once you get through town, grab your first skill gem, you're gonna head out to the beach. I usually will skip a lot of the mobs here and just kill the big packs if you have an AoE ability. Don't spend too much time picking up items because most of the things that you're gonna find here are gonna be upgraded very shortly anyways. And for the most part, you just wanna pick up armor and health. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip the title coves as the first place because it's actually very difficult for a lot of people and I'm gonna show you how to get there a lot easier. For now, we're gonna to go to the mud flats, and what we're gonna do here is run and grab all of the quest items. Now, if you push tab, you'll see your minimap, and the big green circle is the quest markers that you need. There are three, and they're all connected by the little rivers. So if you're having trouble finding them, just follow the little rivers, and that will take you to all three of them. Also, be careful because the roas here really hurt. They will charge you and stun you, and so you just want to kind of kite them around. If you have fire trap or some AoE, you can take them out quickly for some XP. In the meantime, so let's run out. If you see the fetid pulls, I would skip this area as well. You get two respect points for uh, clearing every single mob in this area, which you don't necessarily need this early in the game, and it's actually very difficult for early levels. So we're gonna move on and use the glyphs on the quest and then once you're in the caves you need to find the waypoint as soon as you find the waypoint we're actually going to go back to town and grab your next ability and from here if you haven't already go ahead and talk to nessa and you can buy some coral rings for hp as well as a belt to give you an energy shield you later on will buy the leather belt which gets you hp now, overall, you just want to uh, mostly focus on your HP. Don't worry about damage or any of the other things because early on, all you really need is HP to survive a lot of the encounters in uh, all of normal difficulty level. Now that we're in Tidal Island, we're going to fight Hellrake. This is a enemy that kills a lot of new players. Really, all you need to do is single him out, so it's just you fighting him alone. Make sure you run around him in circles. If you get hit by his icicle, then a lot of times you can get frozen. So if you get a little bit low on HP, just run around in circles while your health flask is healing you up. Once you're back to full health, start doing full damage to him once again. As soon as you've killed him, grab the medicine chest and then log out, log back in, you'll be in town, and you can go ahead and pick up the quest reward, head back to the submerged passage, and from there, go ahead and do the flooded depths and head into the ledge. Here in the ledge, everything is fairly easy and everything clumps up so you can get a lot of XP very quickly, but there will be one enemy that is very difficult for a lot of people, and it's this Kaduku, the false god. It's a giant totem that shoots out lightning. Make sure that if you did not take my advice and build lots of HP, that you'd be very careful around this because you can definitely die very quickly to that lightning damage. So pop your potions as much as possible. Stay above half health because it will shock the crap out of you. The next hard enemy that you're going to fight is going to be uh, in the next area. It's just a skeleton that shoots out a rain of arrows. It's not too bad. Once again, single him out and take him down and just be careful. Uh, overall, at this point, now that you've got your coral rings, you should also be level 8, so you're able to buy a leather belt. So buy your leather belt, you're going to have enough HP to handle most of the monsters. And um, so there is one called Shatters that is going to be in the prison, and he has the ability to freeze you. So go ahead and single him out, take him down, and be careful not to get frozen. There are going to be some annoying enemies here that will resurrect the skeletons that you kill, and if you keep on killing the skeletons, you don't get XP. So I would say to take them down, or if you can easily get to the summoner, kill him quickly, and then move on. 
Now for Brutus. This guy takes out a lot of new characters and he will even take down people in higher difficulty levels with one or two shots. So if you are a melee and you have a lot of damage and you took my advice with the HP, just run up and punch him in the face until he's dead. Keep spamming your potions. Don't get below half health. If you do, then run around the pillar. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to kill him if you decided to play someone really squishy and you didn't build anything but energy shield and you need to kite him. He shoots out a chain and what you need to do is not attack until he hits the chain. Then you can shoot an ability and then move again until he hits his chain and then shoot an ability. Try and run around the pillar. If you do get hit, then you need to run around for a little bit until your energy shield recharges. Don't ever let him chunk into your HP and then you've got this one made. In the next area, there's a giant burning dog which will just tear you up no matter who you're playing and even if you did get HP. You need to make sure that he's by himself if you do decide to fight him. For some of you, you may even want to just skip this guy. But for the most part, if he catches you on fire, you're going to need to run away. On my dagger guy, it wasn't so bad. I had a claw so I can heal myself and I just took him down very quickly while spamming potions. For my witch, I had to find a rock and run around in circles with my fire traps. Every time you get hit by him, you need to just keep on running and not take any more hits. Once you kill him, he drops a giant burning uh, area on the ground. Don't be silly and stand inside of it while you're looking at the loot because you could potentially die as you see my health dropping right here. Once you get to Pirate Cove, find the little area inside of the broken ship and this is where you really have to take it slow. I like to run through areas really fast and I generally don't have a problem but these guys will actually use a spell called Flicker Strike and they will spam Flicker Strike on top of you. One way to deal with it is to uh, resurrect a bunch of skeletons or zombies if you have those and they will flicker strike on those enemies instead. What I do though is I just set up some fire traps and kite them around and just take it slow and try and kill two or three at a time. You'll be fine if you do this. Next up is Fairgraves. Don't be surprised once you turn in the quest he's gonna resurrect an army of the undead to fight you so I'll throw down some traps to help me out and if you have a quick escape ability, just jump out of there and you don't want to be sitting in the middle of everyone when they fight you because Fairgrace has a ton of HP and he can hit pretty hard. Once you enter the Caverns of Anger in about one or two zones, you're going to find these exploding squid biatches and they can take your life really low if you start taking hits from multiple ones, so be careful about that. Also there is a unique in here that shoots fireballs and rains down firestorm. If you catch on fire, be sure to run away and also be very careful because you will take a lot of damage from her. Again, if you do a lot of damage, just run up, tank her, take her out really quickly and use your health potions. Now. Once you are finally at Mervel, this is where you need to make sure you have the right equipment in place before you fight her or you will be demolished. And I know a lot of people do have trouble with her. So one thing that you need to fight Mervel is cold resist. And that's pretty much the main thing. If you have enough cold resist, she is gonna be a very trivial boss for you. So during your travels, you should have been picking up any rings that you found on the ground and if you found two sapphire rings, you want to equip them now instead of your health rings. If you don't have sapphire rings, you can go ahead and go to town and buy them off of Nessa. Now, if both of those things didn't happen, you weren't able to buy any rings and you didn't pick any up on your way, you can actually craft them. In order to craft them, you're gonna need to use an iron ring, which you can again buy from Nessa, or if you pick them up, you'll have them, and a skill gem that is blue, and that'll craft a sapphire ring. So what you wanna do is go to Nessa, sell her a sapphire ring, mm -hmm. or sorry, an iron ring, and a blue gem. If you don't have any blue gems that are extra that you don't want, you can just create a new character like a witch. She gets fireball as her first ability once you kill Hillock, then you get another blue gem that way, and that takes all of one to one and a half minutes to complete. And you can put it in your stash and log in back into your character and you can craft those rings that you're gonna need to fight this boss. So go ahead and equip those sapphire rings and make sure if you have any other cold resist gear that you put it on now, you can put on a shield if necessary. I try to go at least 50% magic resist. If you can get 75, great. Now, here's the part that a lot of people make a mistake on if they have a ranged character. It's really difficult to kill Mervel if you're a ranged character if you stay at a range and fight her because she has a lot of crazy damage abilities. Now, if you're like me and you're a melee, then you can run up, 
tank her in the face with your big cold resist, just pop your health potions and mana potions when necessary, and she's gonna go down very quickly. But, here's what's going to happen if you do not get cold resist and you do not have a lot of HP. This is the character that I built to try and show people like how hard it is if you try and use the energy shield gear that you get in Act 1 and uh, if you don't use the HP gear that you can pick up uh, fairly easily as well. This is my witch trying to kite Mervel. Now, see, whenever I'm not in melee range, she actually uses two different abilities. She uses a, uh, an ice spear and a cold snap, which does considerable damage and will freeze you into place. And she just spams those abilities nonstop, so it's very difficult for you to fight her. Now, in order to kill her with a ranged character, just run up as if you were a melee and tank her. She does way less damage. You're going to use the same abilities, but in this case, you're going to take way less damage. Once she is in her second form, things are much easier. She spawns a few adds, just use your AoE while still attacking her, and you're good to go. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I'll be doing the other acts soon, as well as a lot of other guides for Path of Exile to help out new players and just discuss builds and all kinds of cool stuff. So make sure you subscribe by hitting that button up top. And I'll see you around for the next one. This is Colby Cheese. Peace out.